So before we start this episode, I just want to start with a quick note about a panel discussion I'm going to be part of tomorrow, November 19th, and it's about the Dream, dream Big movie. I'm going to be joining a few other Hispanic engineers, and we'll be talking about engineering and, and our careers, and everything's going to be in Spanish, so that's kind of uh, an exciting thing for me because I don't get to communicate all my engineering knowledge and all, all the engineering things that I've been doing in Spanish, so... Hopefully you guys can tune in and, and enjoy the presentation on the panel discussion. I will link in the description below, so make sure you check it out. And if you haven't checked the movie, I really, really recommend you watch it. Welcome back to another episode of the Engineering Our Future podcast. I am your host, Luis Duque. And this week, I bring a conversation with Hannah. She's an electrical engineer from the UK. She's doing some amazing work at her day job, as well as her side hustle, which is the Engineer Your Mind. And she has been helping a lot of people overcome anxiety. She herself overcame anxiety and depression, which it was really inspiring to hear all the challenges and struggles she had to overcome on her career and, and how these inspire her to start the page Engineering Your Mind and, and her business, basically, uh, where she's coaching, she's creating programs, she is doing a lot of things with that. So... Make sure you check out the website. I'm going to link it in the description below. And make sure you check her out on social media. Make sure you ask her questions if you're you're suffering from, from anxiety. Uh, she's, she's someone that has a lot of great resources for us to learn and to overcome anxiety. So I'm happy to announce that we have a new partner for the podcast, and that's Audible. Audible has thousands and thousands of audiobooks that you can listen while you're cooking, while you're driving, while you are working. And it has helped me actually read more books in the past just because I'm able to read them or listen to them while I'm doing other things around the house or commuting or doing other things. So if you go to audibletrial.com slash engineering our future, you're going to be able to get a one month free trial as well as a free audiobook to listen at your pleasure. So make sure you go sign up. And a book that I recommend that I actually listen on Audible was She Engineers from Stephanie Slocum. She's an amazing structural engineer and she's a really strong advocate for women in engineering. So make sure you check out that book and make sure you check the trial so you can get the, the book for free and also enjoy your free month of Audible. And also thank you to PPI to, for being a, a partner of the podcast for sharing a discount code for the initiative of this show. And as been saying, PPI has some of the most amazing resources for the FE, PE, and the SE exam. So if you are on the course of taking the PE this next April, or if you are planning to take the FE pretty soon, make sure you check all the courses. They are actually offering a early bird um, discount in addition to all the discounts going on to the initiative of this show. So make sure you check them out at ppi2pass.com slash duke to get 15% discount on their products. Without further ado, let's jump right into today's content. Welcome to Engineering Our Future podcast, a podcast where I bring you relevant content from personal experience and guests to help young engineers, students, and international students succeed in their careers. So welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Engineering Our Future podcast. Today, I have Hannah from from engineering, our, engineering Your Mind. She's doing some great work in mental wellness and mental health on Instagram, and she has some some amazing company. Uh, we were talking about some of the things she's doing, and I'll let her introduce herself briefly. Hi, everyone. So I'm Hannah. I am a senior electrical engineer, but also the founder of Engineer Your Mind. Um, I've worked primarily in engineering, graduated about six years ago, uh, working in energy and chemicals for a big American firm. And I recently left to move into data centers and also to start a company. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've been following you for, I don't know, it feels like forever now, a few months <laughs> now. Uh, it's been fun to just uh, just see and, and learn from all the things you have, have to say on Instagram and, and your business and everything. I know it's grown a lot and you put a lot of time into it, even though it's not like your full-time job. And and I'm just curious what motivated you to start that. I know you have some other information on your website about kind of your struggles with anxiety and depression and all these things. And I know that's kind of part of, of the reason you started that, but I just want to hear kind of your background and, and your story behind Engineering Your Mind. 
Yeah, so it was must have been about six years ago. I got diagnosed with anxiety and depression. I think I've had the anxiety all my life, but the depression was new because of specific things that were happening in my life at the time. And I didn't really know how to deal with it. I didn't really know how to go get help. People around me didn't really want to talk about it, which made a lot of things really difficult to get myself out of that space. And it took me a really long time. And it had quite a negative impact on my degree. Uh, It had a negative impact on like starting my career and things. And I ended up burning out really, really quickly. And I spent a lot of time and money trying to help myself. And I feel very lucky and privileged that I was able to do that. And I had a job that allowed me to do that. And I realized looking back that there were so many people that didn't have that help. There were so many people that would reach that point and couldn't be able to go get that help. I don't know what it's like in other places, but in the UK, it's very, very expensive to go get help for mental wellness. And it's also one of those things where one size doesn't really fit everyone. So you then have to spend loads of money trying loads of different things. And it it just really bothered me. And I really wanted to create a space where we could talk about a lot of different things and people could understand how mental illness can appear in your life in so many different ways and create a kind of a community around that. So it started off as a blog, creating that community, and it slowly built out to be able to help me explain different systems and tips and things for people to kind of get an idea of what might help them so that before they kind of like maybe make an investment to go and like work with someone very specific on that. Right. Yeah. I think that's, and I think your mission is really important just especially among engineers. I know there is a high rate of anxiety on, on our profession. And I know there's still a lot of things we need to work on. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, did that affect you like your work or was that mainly when you were a student and how, how did you overcome that anxiety or how do you at least learn how to deal with it? So it's a bit of both. It's been while I've been a student, but also while I've been working. Being a woman in engineering is still like a relatively new thing to the UK. There's still not many of us. So I remember the first time I walked into an engineering lecture for my electrical engineering degree, and I was the only woman in the room. And someone asked me if I was lost, (laughs) tried to redirect me. (laughs) So... It was always there because you kind of, it was one of those things where people always felt like they're like, as long as they beat me, as long as they beat the girl in the class, they were going to be all right. Like, and it was, it made it very, very stressful for me. And it really triggered some of those like anxieties um, around whether I should really be doing engineering and whether it was really for me. And it made my time at uni quite difficult. And that kind of followed into the workplace because I only started learning about engineering when I joined uni. So my whole engineering, like, feeling had been around this anxious mess and I kind of took it with me into my career and actually there was quite a lot of other women I worked with I was quite lucky I had some really amazing women I worked with that kind of helped me understand that that was just kind of like a those people problem (laughs) and nothing really to do with me um but yeah it was hard like it's engineering stressful it's a stressful job it's a stressful like degree to study it takes a long time and it takes up a lot of hours and like the projects that we get to work on are completely amazing, but it is stressful and you do work a lot of long hours. So I think it's quite common that things like anxiety and other mental health issues can pop up. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, I know personally, I haven't really get like officially diagnosed with anxiety, but I know I've had trouble sleeping when I was in college. I've no, I've had like chest pain just for being so stressed out that uh, to the point that I mean, I went to a doctor because it was getting more stressful when you had like chest pains and everything during grad school. And um, it's it's something that I guess with time, you kind of need to start dealing with. There's some techniques uh, that I'm sure you have some some great uh, advice for people, but it's it's hard. I mean, engineering is really stressful. You deal with really tight deadlines. You need to work a lot of times, long hours, at least here in the U.S., you work I mean, sometimes a lot of really long hours and you're dealing with stress, you're dealing with tough clients, you're dealing with tough professors, tough advisors. And it's, yeah, it's stressful to the point that even someone that doesn't really deal with anxiety, it's, it's, it creates that anxiety and that pressure on them that it's kind of hard to, to deal with when, especially when you're a student and, and kind of into the career. Would you give us a, a little overview of like the difference between 
mental wellness and like mental illness because I know for me they seem to be really similar but I know there may be a uh, difference that um, you can point us out to and and maybe explain a little bit about each of them yeah so mental wellness or mental health is something that everyone has it's a part of you much like your physical health and it's really important that it's something that you look after and you maintain kind of like your physical health and like you're studying it's one of those things that you know it needs to be a part of your day and a part of your lifestyle whereas mental illness is actually when there's a problem so in the case of anxiety and depression it can be a change or a hormonal imbalance in your brain there can be specific things that trigger them it can be a lifelong issue so like you said anxiety can appear maybe from specific situations or you can be kind of like me where it's kind of like sat in your life the whole time um and it's understanding the difference because i think a lot of people don't really worry about their mental wellness until they get a mental illness and then they start worrying about it and actually you'd be better off doing it the other way around if you looked after your mental wellness you'd probably prevent yourself from getting a mental illness because a really big part of mental wellness is really understanding yourself and what you need and how you can really help yourself and like any strategies you have in place that can really stop things like depression especially from creeping up because um i mean especially in the crazy times at the moment i know the rates of depression here in the uk at least are skyrocketing um with everyone in lockdown and everything yeah, that's that's very true. Um, I heard a, a stat the other day um, that about one in five engineers suffering from anxiety. Kind of want to hear your opinion. Why do you think that's the case, and what can we do to um, turn that statistic upside down? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually surprised it's that low <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's it's a mixture of things. Engineering is a very high pressure job. And it doesn't help when you have, especially like a lot of press and media around some of the mistakes that happen. So obviously I do believe it's really important to showcase mistakes that happen because that's how we learn. But when you have people almost like, so like Deepwater Horizon, for instance, it's really important that we all understand why that happened, how it happened, but it gets turned into like a Hollywood movie where it's dramatized and even worse. And when you're working in oil and gas, which is where I used to, it, that sits in your head. And that worry is you're building and designing new things. You're like, I don't want to make that mistake, which is great because we don't want to make that mistake again. <laughs> but it's also very stressful on you as a person and it makes you second guess quite a lot of things. But you also work a lot of long hours. Um, I don't think that's just a US thing. I think it's a general engineering thing. Everyone wants everything faster and cheaper and it just becomes this complete mess. I remember working like 50, 60 hour weeks um, and when you start losing sleep and when you start taking that time that's your rest time away it can really start to mess how your brain's functioning and that's where anxiety can really come through because when you're not sleeping you'll start to forget things and then that can trigger your anxiety because you're like oh, did I remember to do this did I remember to do that you start becoming so tired that you slip up on really tiny things so then you start worrying about the bigger things and it can just kind of like spiral so I think it's actually like none of the jobs that I've worked in have ever I feel like had necessarily a very healthy relationship with work I think there's always been times where we're really really pushed to like our limits to get that work out and mental wellness is maybe not considered as much as it should be <laughs> yeah I know for me um, I don't consider like my hours to be super long I try to keep around 40 which is fairly normal <laughs> 40 to 45 definitely there are weeks that you need to work longer hours just because they're deadlines and such but just try to keep those hours low and and try to like work on all the things kind of decide like this podcast and, and other things that i'm doing but for me like i think sometimes the source of anxiety is at work is okay am i doing the best i can do so this project successful or am i maybe forgetting something i shouldn't be forgetting that it's gonna in case in, in my case I, I work with bridges so it's gonna make this bridge fall down or something like that mm -hmm. so that's kind of a source of anxiety at work but then on like my personal life it's am i doing the, the right things um or am i trying to be too perfect that that's just gonna get into my brain and it's gonna generate anxiety so how can we battle maybe that I wouldn't call like imposter syndrome by trying to compare ourselves with each other or trying to 
to pursue things that maybe don't make us as happy in, in our careers? And how can we be that kind of imposter syndrome don't know of, okay, am I doing the right things at work or in our personal life or anything? And, and kind of some of the tactics maybe you have found in, in your personal experiences to combat, combat those um, maybe experiences. Yeah, so I think the first place I get most people to think about is why they're doing something. Like what's your why behind it? And Simon Sinek is a really good person to listen to. He's got some really great videos on and a book about this. And it's really important to understand your motivation for doing that. So like with in case of engineering, I did engineering because I really, really wanted to help people. I really wanted to make the world a better place. I think that's quite a common reason that people do engineering. And it's bringing that focus back to how the work you're doing aligns with that why because that's what's going to start making you happy because I think it's very easy to get lost in all of the day-to-day monotonous activity that can happen with engineering like there's always times where you're just reviewing documents rather than doing the design and there'll be days where you're having to like double check or triple check calculations and you can start to like lose that motivation so I think it's really important to know what your why is have it written down somewhere where you can look at it and be like no this is why I'm doing it today might not be a very great day but it's leading to like this end goal. It's leading to me creating this kind of life. And I think it's the same in our personal life. Um, I think that was part of my problem before. My why was solely my career. I was just like, I'm gonna do engineering and I'm gonna move up through the ranks and do all of this. And as I started to do it, I realized I didn't actually really enjoy it. I just was doing it because society made me feel like that was what success looked like. But that's what I needed to do. I needed to buy a house. I needed to get married. I needed to have a kid. I needed to, be a certain level in my career and actually when I took some time and like I met my partner um, and he's really helped me with finding what happiness is in my personal life as well it's really helped me balance the two out and really understand my why for both and how I can fit them both into my day and that's really brought that happiness back and then in the case of the perfectionism and the comparison that's not uncommon um we share a lot of our lives on social media. I mean, I know I do, I run my business through it, Um, but it allows for that comparison to come up. And one of the things I have people do is keep an evidence bank. So when something comes up, when you're having like your annual review, when someone says something positive to you, write it down in your evidence bank. Mine's like a spreadsheet. And I write down the date, who said it, what they said, because when you're having those days where you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, whether you are not sure that you're the right person to be doing that thing, you can look back at all of that evidence that you have that proves that actually, yes, you are the right person. You're in the right place. And these people will think so as well. So they would probably be my top two tips. I love that idea of, of having that uh, memory bank. And I, I think I've seen you use Notion too. And I think that's a yes. really good tool too. Um, just keep all those little things. That it, has, it has helped me a lot. Just be more organized and be more mindful of the things that I'm doing. I have like a daily journal where I kind of write maybe a thing that I'm grateful that day, something I'm, I'm looking forward to do that day. And that kind of helps me maybe ground myself in the morning and then kind of have an idea routine where I kind of reflect back on the day and, and try, to, try to try to like be more mindful of, okay, maybe this wasn't the best day, but there were still good things that happened that are moving me forward to my goals or are helping me be happier in my life and i think having a memory bank is going to be something i'm going to be adding to my to my setup because i think that's a that's a great idea um you mentioned social media and you mentioned um how we tend to compare kind of each other on social media i know I don't consider i don't consider myself someone that does that very often but every now and then you can come across someone that is doing similar things to you maybe they're a little more successful than you and you look up to them and try to maybe do similar things to kind of improve in your career uh, at the same time there are people that are below you in terms of like maybe number of followers or whatever metrics you want to look at and and they're looking up to you thinking the same thing how the, how, we, how can we beat that cycle of looking at others and comparing ourselves to um like to them rather than maybe thinking okay maybe they're a little more successful than you are what things they're doing right now to get there and what things can i change my um, career to get there so my top tip um is always to 
kind of look at what you're going to learn from them. Those people you're looking up to are like your future version of you. So yeah, it's really important to have a look at what they're doing. And I connect with a lot of people who are doing similar things that Engineer Your Mind's doing. It freaked me out at first. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this because there's other people doing it already. But what makes me different is me and how I approach things. And it's really important to know that you as an individual bring so much value to everything you do. You bring your own spin to everything you do. That's not going to make you the same as someone else. But those people that I connect with on either side, whether they're further ahead than me or coming up towards to where I'm trying to, where I'm at right now. And then as you're connecting with them, you'll learn from them or you'll be teaching them. And if they're people that you connect with and they don't want to teach you or they don't want to learn from you, just <laughs> remove them. Like, <laughs> don't look at them because they're just you know that's them and they're doing their own thing and if they don't want to be like that but I find more often than not people want to help everyone else everyone knows like I know how hard it was for me to get to where I am my engineering career I know how hard it was for me to start building a business and I would do anything to help anyone else who's trying to do the same thing because I always wish that that's the help that I had yeah that's that's a great point and I know, I think you have some mentoring programs and, and kind of coaching people. I think that's great. I kind of try to do the same to help students that are maybe close to graduation and mentor them through kind of that transition, especially right now with, with all that is going on um, in the world. It's a lot harder to find a job. It's a lot harder to stay motivated and stay to like stay involved in the career, which is something I, I'm passionate about. And, and I think mentoring is a great way to kind of give back to to students and give back to other people kind of around around the career do you have any um morning or like night routines that kind of help you maybe start your day or like wind down at the end of the day that have helped you um maybe like sleep better maybe beat your anxiety a little bit towards the end of the day um that's something i actually struggle quite a bit just to fall asleep and try to wind down from working all day and then spending a few hours kind of working on the podcast, working on my side uh, projects. And and sometimes I feel like my brain is just racing a thousand miles per hour when I go to bed and, and it's kind of hard to um, relax and fall asleep. Like what what has helped for you and, and what techniques do you use for your morning and, and night routine? Um, I know the brain racing at night. I have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my coaching classes where I'm getting taught by people are in the evening and then I go to bed and I'm like, oh, there's all these amazing things that I could do. So top tip for racing minds in the evening is have a notepad nearby. Preferably make it a notepad, not a phone, um, to remove the blue light issues um, and just start scribbling them down. I do the same if I, anything's worrying me. I have during, even during the day, I have a, a pad where I can jot them down just to get them out of your head because sometimes just having it out of your head is enough to help it relax. But yeah, I have I try and keep to a routine. And I think the important things with routines, um, especially if anyone's listening who's never had one before or wants to start one, is to not try and do all the things at once. If you try and make loads of changes at once, it falls on its face. It's take it step by step. You see it on social media all the time where they're like, here are 10 ways that you can solve anxiety. And then you just see everyone try and do all the 10 things at once. Don't do all the 10 things at once. Do it one at a time. But my morning, so I do similar to you. Um, I use Notion for a lot of things, but I actually don't use Notion for this. I know many people that do, but I use the five minute journal. Um, and it's the same, like it gives you a quote. It gives you, asks you three things that you're grateful for, three things that you want to happen that day and an affirmation. And then in the evening, it makes you go back and reflect again on what actually went well and actually something you could improve on which is something I really like. I don't know. I think it's maybe a me personality thing, but I really like knowing like, how could I have made this better? But maybe that's just the engineer in me. I'm still <laughs> looking to make it better. And then evenings, um, the most important thing is to understand how much sleep you need as a human. There seems to be this like, almost like trend to be able to function on as little sleep as possible. But it's really, really unhealthy to do that. It can have a lot of knock-on effects to your physical body as well as your uh, mental health. So it's really important to try and understand how much sleep you need and to try and actually fit that into your day. I know it's not always possible. Important things with routines is to appreciate that there will be days where it doesn't happen. So, for instance, I try and stop looking at blue light after a certain point at night. It's quite late at the moment and I'm making an exception because this is important and I'm very grateful to be here. And... But I also know that I'm doing this during my holiday, so I, my bedtimes can change a little bit and I can still get that sleep. So 
it's all about making sure that they're flexible as well and that you you aren't too rigid with them because I find that's when they sort of start falling apart but yeah I'm definitely reduce blue light try and read maybe if you like read exercise is quite a good way um I find to I usually do it in the morning to help me wake up but I find things like maybe like yoga or calming exercises are quite good for the evening but if you're really struggling sleeping there are some really really great sleep hypnosis YouTube videos I can always send you some links and I find them really helpful I've never made it to the end of one ever I've always fallen asleep yeah that that's great um yeah it's it's sometimes it just my brain yeah it's going a thousand miles per hour because I usually obviously I work from from eight to five and come home I usually try to spend a couple hours with the family and then maybe spend two maybe sometimes even three hours working on other things then by the time you're going to bed you spend what 14 15 hours in front of the computer and you are thinking about all these things that you just thought about maybe last minute and you're trying to finish up for the website for the podcast for all these things and then yeah your your brain just goes a thousand miles per hour and it's so hard to fall mm -hmm. asleep um i usually try to read uh, right before bed but sometimes i find that the book that i'm reading i really enjoy it too much that <laughs> i just want to keep reading <laughs> yeah i know that um, problem <laughs> uh, so i just kind of a lot of times end up just scrolling through social media which i know is horrible to to fall asleep but trying to maybe calm down a little bit and then eventually put my phone down and i'm just so exhausted that i just fall asleep maybe at 11 p.m or something like super late um but i think yeah those advices are, are really great and and i i'm continuously trying to perfect my morning and ride routine it changes continuously from month to month even from like year to year just because the way that I'm thinking this year is going to be very different the way I'm thinking next year and even from month to month. So every 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 time I kind of feel stuck, I kind of try to look back at what am I doing and how can I do it better to serve me better for the purpose that I'm, I'm doing the, the routines. Um, so I think that's great advice and, and I know I'll be taking your advice into my Notion setup. I've also heard of the, like, the Monk Manual, which is awesome and they have some really great planning and some really great reflection tools in, in their journal. Um, I think that's that's all kind of I had for you. Do you have anything else you want to share with us from your anxiety experience and maybe other techniques that have helped you maybe in your career and in your personal life and all the things you're doing? Maybe tell us a little bit more about like your engineering, your mind uh, business and some of the courses and, and training you're doing. Sure. Um so with anxiety support, one of the big things is making sure you have a really good support network around you. The problem with mental illnesses such as anxiety or any of the others you come across is that you're quite literally having a battle with the inside of your head. So it can be really, really helpful to have people on the outside to give you like a separate perspective to kind of help knock those voices that might be coming up in your mind. Um, and I think it's really important to really like thoroughly check that support system because I think quite a lot of us I don't know it depends on you as a person um but I knew I was very much a people pleaser so I just wanted everyone to like me and I wanted everyone in my support system and I realized that there was actually a lot of people that were really unhealthy for me so and so I'm making sure that the people around you are the right people to be around you if they're triggering your anxiety if being around them makes you nervous or anxious it's okay to say no and that's probably my second big tip is learning how to say no. That was also something I didn't really know how to do very much when I was younger. <laughs> and it's something I've really learned and it's been really effective to, because I definitely came into work and I was like, I want to do all of the things. I'm going to be a STEM ambassador. I'm going to do women in engineering. I'm going to do mental health stuff. I'm going to do innovation stuff. And it became this really, really like, I was doing so many extra things that it was like you said, you got to this point where you were sleeping just because you passed out of exhaustion. <laughs> not because you'd actually like planned your day effectively because there's just so so many things i remember being on the call with someone at like one o'clock in the morning in the states once for something and it, just, it got insane so it's being able to say no and i think that comes back to understanding your why and kind of like what success looks like for you because that's what's going to help you determine what's a really good activity for you to be engaging in and what's actually not really that helpful and getting you on the path that you want to go to because trying to do a lot of things 
um, can often also be a sign of imposter syndrome as well. You're almost trying to prove to everyone in yourself that you're worth it by doing absolutely everything you ever can to get that across. So when those anxieties come up, I think it's really important to understand when you should say no. And it takes time. It took time for me to really get control of my anxiety. It's not nothing with mental health is like a one and done it's much like your physical health like you have to keep working on it a little bit every day and eventually you'll get like systems that work for you and it's completely okay if the systems that work for you are not the systems that work for someone else that's the other problem people keep trying to copy what every influencer in the world is doing and it's okay if that doesn't work for you if you don't like meditate i don't like meditating i hate it it drives me nuts i can't do it i can't sit still So I don't, I go for a run or do exercise or read a book and I find it has the same effect, but yeah, but it's really about finding what works for you. And that kind of leads into engineering your mind. Like I'm really a big fan of, of finding what works for you so that you can make like that sustainable change in your life. And yeah, so I'm creating different programs and resources to allow people to do that. Um, because I just, I never want anyone to ever have to feel as bad as I felt and as lonely as I felt. So it's really important for me to, with the company, to feel like I'm creating a community of people that can support each other because I really think talking about like mental health and just mindset in general is how we're going to normalize it and make it more normal for everyone. But it's also about being able to give people who need maybe some one-on-one support that ability to be able to, to get it. And I hope that I'm providing it. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And I know for me, that kind of imposter syndrome, it's it's more so like I'm a Latino here in the U.S. working as a minority. And I want, I, I sometimes I feel like I need to prove myself and prove others that I'm capable of doing all of these things. And I soon realize that there is no way I'm going to be able to do all of these things and have a family and have a career and have all of these other things kind of rounded. And I kind of started to applied like the 80 20 principle the prior to principle of putting my effort where it really matters so this podcast it's growing it's it's helping other people uh hear these stories help me connect with other engineers help me learn a lot of things from from great people volunteering with engineers without borders helping all these communities in need is something that i really value and it's really important to me mm-hmm. and and just being part of committees and organizations that I really align with and and that are helping me in my career and that are are allowing me to help other engineers kind of achieve their goals and and help them in their careers as well. So I think that's very true. Not trying to be involved in anything just because it's out there and you can. It's more so focusing your energy in in what matters the most at the time that that you're living on. And I talked about this in previous episodes and I talked about with with other people is... uh, like consider these seasons you are in your life right now like this may be a season of you need to spend more time with your family rather than volunteering or in your career but there may be other seasons that you can help communities and help volunteering and help organizations and and i think that's also important to consider so thank you so much for all you're doing i know i I poker on your website this past week and there's a lot of great content there a lot of great courses and programs and everything so i'll be linking that on the show notes below and yeah thank you so much for coming to the podcast and and sharing your experiences and um i'm happy we connected when we did and i've been able to learn a lot from you and um yeah i think that's that's kind of everything all the questions i have for you and um i don't know if you have any any other final thoughts um and and where can people find you and connect with you um yeah i don't my main thought is just to always put you like think about you first and understand yourself because that's where that value is going to come in and that's where that happiness is going to come but yeah you can find me on uh linkedin personal page or the engineer your mind page um instagram the handles engineer your mind um there is a facebook group Instagram's probably the best place to contact me. You can also drop me an email at hello at engineeryourmind.com and I'm happy to answer any of your questions if any questions have come up through this podcast. Yeah, that's great. Uh, one last question I have for you is how can we continue engineering our future? Such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really about understanding how the times are changing. I think that's something that's sometimes missed out in engineering. Um 
especially because as we said before safety is such a really key part and it takes a long time to get systems in place so it's about being able to be really adaptable to be able to like see what's coming to understand like younger generations of what they're going to need so that the products that we're designing and creating is really gonna you know it's gonna move with the times because i think sometimes that's missing and i think engaging with younger generations is like the key to navigating that i the amount of conversations i have with so much clarity to engineering <laughs> is amazing and yeah i think that's i think they are very much in the knowledge of where we're going to be going yeah thank you so much i know i, I enjoy following you on your on instagram page has it helped me beat some of that imposter syndrome some of my anxieties and and helped me just kind of live a more happy life overall so thank you so much for what you're doing and i hope um, your business keeps doing as great as it's doing and, and growing as fast as it's growing. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming to the podcast and I'm sure we'll stay in touch. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So there you have it. That's the conversation with Hannah today. She shares some amazing insight into her career, into all the things that she's doing with both electrical engineering as well as her page engineer, Your Mind. I know I've been following her for quite a while now and we've been able to connect and I was happy to bring her to the podcast to share all these great things with you. So I really hope you enjoyed the podcast and remember this podcast is for you. So if you are enjoying the conversations we're having here today, can I ask you to please go review and rate the show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure you tell me why you like it, maybe why you don't like it ways that I can improve the podcast because at the end of the day, this podcast is for you. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, this is the second to last podcast of this year. I'm going to be taking a little break over Christmas and we're coming back really strong next year. So make sure you are subscribed so you can listen to all the new guests that I'm bringing in next year and make sure you listen to the great content we have lined up next year. Thank you so much for coming back to this episode. I hope you have a, a fantastic rest of your day. Again, thank you, Jack Winters, for the music. And as always, I'll talk to you in the next one. But for now, let's continue engineering our future.